You've got no salmon, Con, no auditioning for Silence of the Lambs. This fish didn't get its life tanged off his cat food. Gently. Like you're making love to... Oh, we're making love to dead fish now, are we? Aye, like you're making love to Agnes here. Anyway, I should have known something was wrong when he goes in the kitchen and starts making coffee. I asked you about for coffee. I didn't expect him to actually make the stuff. So we have a coffee. He plays his entire collection of Scottish traditional folk music. He sings me a couple of love songs with his finger in his ear, which is supposed to get me in the mood. And I can't help thinking he's got the wrong part of his anatomy and the wrong wee hole, until I finally had to throw myself on him and drag him off to bed. Nothing like your traditional courtship. We missed some there. And I don't know why I bothered. It was useless. I had to keep throwing him where the joy button was. I mean, losing it once, that's ignorance, but six times, that's just carelessness. What's a joy button? Never mind, Agnes. You used to have one, but it shriveled through lack of use. So I got a taxi home before he ended up trying to stick his willy in my navel. Are you eavesdropping again, Hamish? No, look, I've told you, not like that. I've got it. No, you've no. Just it's... piss off with it! Ah! Look at that bastard. Every time I look up there, he's watching me. Watching every move I make. <laughs> he's not watching you. He's watching Kathy. That isn't a Rottweiler up there. It's a lovesick puppy dog. Come on. I'll get you a plaster. Done your blood test. Jennifer? Jennifer! Ma! Ma! Jennifer, don't. She's gone high, get the look at these. Come on, Jen, come on. Jesus. Jesus, come on. She's not gonna drink it. I'll get the hypercar. You phone an ambulance. We need to see if Jane is home. What? The phone's no working. We couldn't pay all the bills, so I left it to next time. Well, that was a brilliant idea. You'd have the car if Kenny was there a fortune dirty bills. What's going on? Everything's fine. Go back to bed. Where are you going? I'm going to make a run for it. You can't carry her all the way to Castletown. <laughs> Show me the way. Just follow this road for the moment. Uh, see we're in a hurry, like, so you better pass on your seatbelt. You're the new lad at the factory. Con's the name. Con's the game. I didn't know you had a car. I don't. How long has she been down already? Three years. Do you know her weight? High five stone two. What kind of insulin is she on? Human accurate. Four units in the morning and six in the evening. I'll need 50% dextrose and a glucose drip. Don't worry, she'll be fine. Thought you might need a lift home, like. I'll be staying on. She's okay, but they're keeping her in overnight. There, I got your coffee. 
That may be cool now, but well, you might as well have it. <laughs> well, what's this? I thought she was okay. My life is a mess. You have no idea what a mess my life is in. Here, I haven't got a tissue or anything, but you can use my sleeve. No. Go on. Now your mascara's everywhere. Oh, you shut up. I'm really sorry. Oh. No problem. There. Good as new. You really ought to get that car back. <sighs> no sweat leg. That belongs to a tourist who's sleeping off a hangover at the castle hotel. <laughs> I'll put it back where I found it, like, and, uh, well, he'll swear he filled it up with petrol yesterday. I saw you playing the other night at the Cayley. I thought you were brilliant. Most folk do. Were the band, though, annoyed that you got up there like that? I think the fiddle player was, eh? Especially when they asked me to do some gigs with them. And what did you tell them? Well, they played it, actually, so I had to accept. My dad used to do the Cayley circuit. Played the tin whistle. Does he still play? No. No, he drowned a couple of years ago. Drowned? Well, he was a fisherman, see? This boat went adrift over back of the doors. I mean, that's a wee group of islands and rocks across the loch at Black Harbour. I mean, the waters are really treacherous there. My dad and a few other boats went out to try and get them off. But the weather turned really bad. And I went overboard. Kenny, that my man, jumped in to try and save him, but he, he just disappeared. You should have heard him play. He, he was great. Do you play yourself? I used to. Tin whistle? And then flute. Dad wanted me to be a proper musician. I almost went to music college once. Even bought the books for the first term. Almost. <laughs> every Saturday night, there's a drunk in every pub falling off a bar stool and telling the story of what might have been. <laughs> and what's yours? Oh, I was third runner-up in the 1979 Young Scottish Musician of the Year competition. What's oh, for? <laughs> My ma's been telling that story to anybody who listened, which, to be honest, is a pretty short list for the past 17 years. <laughs> so? So there are only six finalists who got first place, second place, and third place, and first, second, and third runners-up. I, mean, I came in last. You made the final eight. I'm starting college in the autumn. Which one? The Scottish Academy. The audition's next week. How do you know you'll get in? Please. You insult me. <laughs> that cut'll slow you down. Have you seen the competition in these places? They're all fat, rich kids with less talent than chin. I should cut off two of my fingers and still get in. <laughs> Aye, right enough. Oh, I suppose I should go back in. Here. Take this. Top the car up with petrol. Oh, come on. <laughs> that would be like boring it. Do it anyway, eh, please. And thanks for everything. back scheming next week at the slightly later time of five past nine here on BBC One.